Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Airfix Fairy Gannet in 1 to 48th scale. Huge amount of hype around this kit, so let's see what it's all about. Hope you enjoy. Today's video is made possible by the guys over at Jadlam Toys and Models. They host a huge amount of stock to satisfy all of your modelling needs, whether that be all the latest releases like this Gannet or stocking up on paints and supplies. All of this at a highly competitive price. They're trusted by over 30,000 people, so if you do plan on picking one of these Gannets up, be sure to check them out using the link below. Cheers. So we start off this Gannet by building up the interior. Specifically, you can see on screen that I'm building up the bomb bay. This is built up using two bulkheads, one at the front, one at the back. Once they are cemented in place, I can then go on to attach the wing spar on top of this. There's nice raised uh, sort of locating pins to ensure that you get the right positioning. After this, I can put another mini bulkhead as per se in, and this is actually going to act as a little bit of structural support for the interior platform or the floor of the interior, which is going to lay above this bomb bay. So here's the first example of Airfix looking out for the modeler as per se. They include this little tray part which uh, cements just in front of there and you fill it up with nose weight. So I use liquid gravity for my nose weight, filled it up and then put a couple of dollops of PVA just to secure everything in place. Once that dried I can then go on to cement the interior or the cockpit's floor on top of the bombay. It snaps into place really nicely and then once that was done I need to do a little bit more nose weight. So I created this little tray as per se out of some styrene and then filled it up to the brim with liquid gravity again. I would probably not do this I just because I don't think this was the most efficient way to get a lot of weight in there. Instead, I would try and use some really dense washers or something because there's quite a nice area there to fill it up with. But whatever you do, don't be stingy on the nose weight because this thing needs a lot of it. Take my word for it. Moving away from nose weight, here you can see me building up the interior sub-assemblies. That includes all of the operating stations for the operators, of course, uh, the seats, all of the uh, nice little bulkheads, etc, etc. Everything is really nicely moulded and detailed in here. Uh, you're not going to see a huge amount of it as the Gannet has got quite a closed interior, but it is nice to know that it is all there and you can definitely have a lot of fun painting all of these details. There's also the opportunity to probably scratch build quite a few details yourself if if you feel that way however me personally i don't think there's a huge need everything also goes together without any issues at all in regards to the fit there's nice locating pins to ensure that you get everything in the right position once all of the sub assemblies had been put together i can put the first bit of paint down for this build and that is going to be mr hobby's c33 which is a flat black color the british really enjoyed their super extravagant interior colors which is exactly why they went with the color flat black Anyway, moving on, it's time to do a little bit of detail painting. This is going to be done using a variety of colours, yellow, red, metallic colours, white, greys, you name it, just trying to highlight some of those lovely details which Airfix went to the trouble of moulding for us. They're really easy to pick out and also all of this painting was done using Ammo Mig's uh, airbrush ready paint I just like to brush paint with them which is a little bit ironic then to do a little bit of highlight work rather than dry brushing I like to use AK's weathering pencils and this is the rubber color and I'm just going across some of those nice raised details to uh, differentiate them do a couple of different tones of black so hopefully you can see it on the clip I know it is quite hard to see but it is there I'm sure you're just going to have to trust me I can now cement a couple of these sub assemblies in there's nice slotting mechanisms and if the instructions are nice and clear as well so you're not going to get lost in this stage of the build. A little tip that I have for you is not to put the uh, operator's control stations in until you've put the decals on for them. As I was, you know, my, my hands just couldn't bend in certain directions to get really accurate uh, decal application on them. So potentially just leave them off, uh, gloss them at the same time, just to save yourself a little bit of a headache. So one or two other little bits and bobs have to get cemented in, like some seats and also painting some headrests. But there you go, that is pretty much the interior, nicely detailed and really a joy to put together. So everything now gets sealed in using the spray can version of Mr. Super Clear and that is pretty much just GX100 in a spray can form. I'm now going to use Mr. Mark a setter and softer to put the decals in place. As you can see I didn't film the decal application of the uh, interior but just because I, I was finding it so hard to get my hands in the right position so don't cement them in until you have to at the last minute. So then to 
kind of break up this really really dark and dingy black color I'm going to be using a neutral wash and I know some people might say you're not going to have this sort of dust and stuff on an aircraft carrier where the gannet would be however this uh, specific airframe was stationed in Cyprus so let's just say that there was a bit of sand in the air and it managed to make its way into the cockpit completely accurate no but does it highlight all of those details Yes, yes it does, so I'm not going to complain. Complain if you want, we can have a little debate. <laughs> But anyway, after I scrubbed off all of that excess wash, I was left with a far more dusty and a far more lived in sort of looking interior, which I was very happy with. So another thing or the last thing to go on the interior is going to be the cockpit um, or the instrument dials. And that was pretty much done using Mr. Mark Setter and Sol. And then just to give a little bit of that glossy effect on all of the dials, I used some VMS gloss varnish and dabbed it onto them. And that worked really quite nicely. So that can then be uh, cemented into the front of the interior and that was really the interior all sorted. One thing which I do want to note is the instrument panel looked really really clean compared to the rest of the build so that was a small mistake on my part. Also I did replicate that glossy effect on any of the uh, radar operation stations <laughs> and then I could put the interior into one half of the fuselage. This slides into place quite nicely, definitely needs a little bit of pressure to get it going but once you get there it kind of shimmies into place really nicely indeed. At this stage of the build I would definitely spend a bit of time ensuring that the bulkheads are all at around about 90 degrees or just ensuring that they're not jutting out too far as once you put the other half of the fuselage in place it's going to be far harder to manipulate them. So speaking of the second half of the fuselage, it shimmies into place very similar to the first half of the fuselage. Something which I, I could probably recommend is potentially scraping off any paint on the spars. I know I had a little bit of paint on the spars which probably made it a little bit harder for the uh, fuselage halves to get into the right position. Although the fit is absolutely superb on the whole, I did use some VMS Flex CA to fill my gaps. I, I like to use super glue to fill my gaps just because, I don't know, it's a medium which I like to work with. So that was all filled and then sanded back. And then I used these two rescribing tools to restore any of the lost detail. As modern Airfix do like to put a lot of re uh, rivets details onto all of their models, which is really, really appreciated. It does make rescribing a little bit uh, more of a task than it once was. No complaints here, it just means a couple extra minutes. With everything rescribed, I can now turn my attention to another sub-assembly. This time we're going to be looking at the gear bays. So the gear bays have a really nice mechanism. There is this external jig piece and then the detailed pieces fill on the inside of that and it works really, really nicely. They all slot together with no issues, no, nothing needs to be trimmed. It just kind of flies together. One or two exterior detailed parts have to be fitted like that little hydraulic tank I believe it is and then it can go into the lower half of the wing. While I was waiting for that to dry, I do recommend that it's a good point to now go and reference the instructions and see what loadout you're going to be carrying on your gannet. If you are going to be using the included rockets, then there are just a couple more holes that you need to be drilled out using your pin vise. So once there are several holes in the lower half of your wing, you can put these structural rectangly looking shapes into the wing as well. I believe these are structural. I can't really think of any other reason you might want them there but once they're in place you can then do a little bit more painting and this time I'm going to be using AK's Extreme Metal Color Aluminium for the gear bays. I really enjoy using the AK Extreme Metal Color purely because they're pretty much airbrush ready you can thin them if you want and they're also super reflective like I could almost see my reflection in them. This was sprayed to the upper surfaces of the wing and also the gear bay which had just been assembled. Afterwards, I did want to put a little bit of grime in there, so I'm just going to be using a dark wash to highlight some of those details and give a little bit more of a grubby effect. I also made sure not to wipe off too much of the uh, excess wash, as really, if you want to convey that grubby and dirty effect, you definitely can leave a little bit more wash on there. That being said, there is a fine line between drowning the parts in wash and having a nice bit of build up still left on there. So to get rid of any wash, which I thought was maybe a little bit too harsh, I'm just going to be using a clean uh, little cotton bud. And these are Tamiya's brand cotton buds. I do like the Tamiya brand cotton buds purely because they are really, really tightly um, kind of woven together. So you're not going to have any bits of cotton flying off.
I can now cement the upper half and the lower half of the wing together. This goes together very, very nicely. The one thing which I would say now is the fact that there is quite a prominent seam on the leading edge. And I believe that's just because of how thick the profile of the Gannett's wing is. So you will have to spend a little bit of time trying to get rid of all of the, of any seam here. I think I had to go back once or twice, even after primer, trying to get rid of any reminiscence of a, a seam. And I think even and then I still have one or two little bits of seam there. But yeah, just it's, it's an area to probably spend a bit of time and uh, put a bit of focus into. With that minor negative out of the way, I can now do this another time. So I have two wings and then I can cement them into place. As you can see, there's a small little rail system which, uh, you know, co-aligns with the wing spar, which is on the fuselage. And it's a really nice fit as in very very impressive fit you really have to put some force to get it to kind of click into place and once it is there you almost you almost don't need any glue so if you don't have the most amount of transport place if you want to take this for a show you could probably get away with just dry fitting these i mean would i personally no but uh, if you wanted to you definitely could so looking onto some different parts of the build now, here you can see me cementing in place the part where the radome comes out of. Nice to note that Airfix does give you the option to have the radome in the kind of extended or retracted position. If you're displaying it on the floor or with gear out and on, on the uh, ground, then it has to be in the retracted position. Moving on to now look at the uh, rear end of the gannet. I'm here fitting the rudder into place. This is made out of two parts which have to be cemented together. Very similar case for the uh, horizontal stabilizers. These are also made out of two, place, uh, two pieces, not places, sorry. And they kind of slot uh, into place and interweave. <laughs> As you can see, it pushes one side out. So maybe uh, either cement one side in before you put the other side or hold it when you're putting them both in together. Also, a little bit of a side note here, it was at this point of the build where I kind of started to notice how bloody fat the gannet is, like in all aspects of it. The, the, look, like, look how size and how thick that rudder is. Everything is huge. I'm not trying to body shame the gannet here, but my god, it is chunky. Anyway, sorry for, for that, um, but moving on to looking at the build, here you can see me putting in the uh, little tailplanes which go on the horizontal stabilizers. And interestingly enough, these were actually put onto the gannet because of the huge ray dome and the rear cockpit. It caused quite a lot of instability when flying the gannet. So to try and rectify this, uh, Fairy kind of put these little tailplanes onto, onto the thing and it kind of rectified the issue, which I thought was quite cool. So while I was giving you a little history lesson, you could see me putting together the flaps. These can be uh, displayed in the raised or extended position. I personally opted for the extended position just because I thought they looked quite cool. Moving on, here you can see me building up the front nose section of the gannet. Um, something, I don't know if this was just on mine, but when I was feeling around the edge of this piece here, you can see that there's almost a little bit of flash. So I kind of sanded it off. So... I don't think it was meant to be there. Maybe it is. I probably should have dry fitted it before I sanded it a little bit down. However, it just didn't seem right. So do let me know if that was just on mine or if yours had a very similar issue. So before I actually put this front nose section onto the... Uh, rest of the gannet i did this little center of gravity test and as you can see it, it it looked a little bit tail heavy still even after putting quite a lot of weight in there so i did in fact put um stuff a lot of I, I kind of got a clay ball and in the center of that clay ball was a load of liquid gravity so yeah i just kind of did that stuffed it in there and hoped for the best and thank god i did do this purely because later on in the build i know you don't see it yet however it did it was still a little bit tail heavy like it's just on the brink so um at this point before you put the nose on do a little cg test uh just to ensure that you don't have tail sitter so I did have a small fitment issue on this front section. However, I'm going to put this down to the fact that I put a huge blooming great clay ball into it and I feel like that probably messed it up. So a little bit of Leho Putty sorted that right out. I can then use this little jig which is provided by Airfix in the box to drill out these two holes. And this is because I'm using uh, Scheme C which has a slightly different, I believe it's an antenna, um, which I thought was quite a nice touch from Airfix rather than, you know, kind of blindly showing you uh, on, a, on a bad diagram where to uh, drill out. So, you know, it's, it's another feature of Airfix just uh, looking out for the modeler, which I, I really like. And there you go, you can see that that piece has now been cemented in place. 
So moving now on to have a look at the glass work. There is quite a lot of glass on the gannet as you do have three people in it, so three different operating stations. The glass does kind of slot into place quite nicely, however, definitely dry fit it as it is an incredibly obvious way you do put this piece. So, you know, have a little play around with it before you start gluing anything together. The kit does also come with two windscreens, one which does have a windscreen wiper and one without, so it's a nice little thing to note. Looking at the uh, main sort of uh, canopies, they all have a seam down the middle of them. So to rectify this, I got a new blade out and then the first call of action was to slowly scrape away that seam as much as I could. And then I'm going to be using an ammo mig sanding stick and working up the grits to try and get rid of it. Every time working in different directions to hopefully minimize all scratches. Was it? I don't think I executed it completely perfectly as I think there was one or two scratches at the end. Once I'd worked up all of the grits, I then used Tamiya's polishing compound just to get rid of all of those tiny little scratches, or at least try to get rid of a lot of those little scratches. So once I was happy that the vast majority of the scratches had gone, I can then mask off the uh, rest of the canopies, put them on a stick, and I can get ready for primer. So when it comes to primer for this build, I'm going to be using Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. That has been my primer of choice now for quite a few builds and videos, as I really like how it goes down. Once it has gone down and I've left it to dry, I'm going to be using a sanding stick just to get rid of one or two imperfections, whether that be some dust or, you know, if the paint hasn't gone down right. And all also, there you go, that wing, uh, that wing seam has come back to haunt me again. So they can all be sorted out before moving on. So the first colour which is going to be sprayed down after the primer is Mr. Colour 368, which is a Sky Type S colour. And that is applied for the underside, the bomb bay, and also about half of the main fuselage. This is sprayed down at around about one bar, so 15, 16 PSI, using my Hardrin Steenbeck Evolution. And it's thinned in around about the ratio of 30, 40 to 60, 70% thinner. I ensure to also paint the underside surfaces of the flaps at this stage as I very often forget to paint these elements. I'm not too sure why, I'm just quite forgetful. After that was all painted and relatively dry, I can now go on to do a bit of post shading. So I remixed the Sky Type S color, but this time with one or two drops of white in there. This is going to create a lighter tone, which can then be sprayed onto certain parts. I'm going to use some masking tape to mask off certain panels and then I'll pretty much just dust it on. A good thing to note is the fact that I'm actually going 20% paint here to around about 80% thinner. It's just more diluted which means I won't overdo the effect. To really help sell this kind of patchy and post shaded uh, kind of faded look it's really good not to have too harsh of tone variations otherwise it just looks too patchy. So I like to do two different effects. The effect which you've just seen, which is a very patchy and blocky looking effect, and also using this effect here, which is more of a gradient. Uh, this gives the effect that the uh, panels are starting to wear at different stages and gives that kind of uneven looking effect. Here you can see me showcasing the fact that the uh, Bombay has taken more of this patchy effect and the uh, rest of the fuselage seems to have a bit more of this sort of gradiented effect. So my last video was on Airfix's Seafire and the extra dark sea grey that I used was a little bit too bluey. So I sprayed it back on a test subject here to contrast the two uh, different paints which I could potentially use. And this time I opted to go for a little bit more of the greyish colour. And that was purely because after looking at a couple of reference images, it seemed that the greyish tone of the extra dark sea grey seemed a little bit more accurate to the representation. After that had been sprayed down, I'm going to do the exact same effect which was previously discussed on the Sky Type S colour, however this time of course on the Extra Dark Sea Grey. A challenge which I found was the Gannet's wings are huge and they're, they're very monotone in just this basic Extra Dark Sea Grey colour, so I was just trying to figure out a good way to give a little bit of interest to them. Uh, I didn't want to make it too patchy, but I didn't want to make it too gradienty, so it did present quite a nice challenge. However, once I had finished it, this was a result and I was actually quite happy. I hope that you can see that the colour is a little bit more broken up to what it once was. You could definitely approach this in potentially a little bit more of a pre-shaded effect if you wanted to. However, I personally don't enjoy pre-shading these days as I'm not a huge fan of the effect that it gives. So to do some more masking now, I'm going to be masking off the walkways. I personally prefer to spray down my walkways if I can. It is also good to know that Airfix do supply a decal for this if you don't wish to do some masking. So the reason that I do masks um, things off if I can rather than uh, use decals is purely because I'm not incredibly 
comfortable or I don't have a set method which works incredibly well for me for decal application yet. It's something which I'm trying to work on in my modeling. So if you do have any tips about decaling, do let me know. So Scheme C has the invasion stripes on them. I do love invasion stripes. If I do have an excuse to do them, I definitely will grab that chance. Uh, also, nicely on the um, marking sheet, it does tell you that the invasion stripes should be approximately six millimeters in uh, width. Luckily, the Tamiya masking tape, which I had, was exactly six millimeters. So I used that almost as a little bit of a guideline for uh, getting the correct measurements. Once I had masked off the correct uh, area for it, I sprayed down the black first. Then I masked off the two black stripes and then I sprayed down the white. These colors are both SMS colors. I believe it is just the, the black and the white color. I don't think they're flat. I believe they are glossy. However, everything gets unified as we know. So once that had been masked off, I needed to continue this on the flaps. The flaps did make it a little bit harder to kind of figure out where I should be masking off as they go down at a slightly um, different angle, as in they don't just go straight down like F-16 flapperons. They kind of have a little bit of an angle to them. So a little bit of math and a little bit of a headache was uh, kind of done when I was trying to figure this out. However, it, we, we got there in the end and then once they'd been masked off I thought this was the appropriate time to put the flaps onto the aircraft. When I was putting these flaps on I did notice that you really have to ensure that the actuators are fully pressed into their slots otherwise your flaps are going to be at some weird funky looking angles so be careful and just make sure they're completely pressed in. Moving now on to have a look at the gear, they build up very, very nicely. They are made up of some nice chunky plastic as the Gannet is quite a, a chubby bird as we've already discussed. I was very happy to see that these are quite these are some quite hefty landing gears. One thing which did unfortunately annoy me a little bit is the fact that I didn't realize but this part um, which you saw me previously put on had been broken off when on the sprue and I didn't realize until I'd completely thrown the bags away so maybe there was a part in the bag maybe it did this is just a sort of molding malfunction but anyway really it isn't the end of the world purely because that part wasn't structurally integral so if you know it is kind of I could go on about it all day but I won't we shall move on the nose gear locks into place very, very nicely and it really does have quite a nice bit of strength to it. So it, I, I'm just such a lover of, of strong landing gear because I can't tell you how many times I've had planes just kind of fold on themselves because of weak landing gear. So, you know, two thumbs up here. Moving now on to put the uh, actual gear onto the uh, landing gear struts so they all have nicely molded uh, sort of weight indentations onto them which is always a nice feature and airfix have been doing it for quite a bit of time now so i'm always happy when i see this the ray dome can slide into place now i didn't put any glue on this as the friction fit was just really really good and now i can have a look at putting on the uh, very iconic counter rotating prop that the gannet has this part of the build really felt like a very satisfying jigsaw puzzle. As you can see, there's different shapes and they kind of uh, like co a line and they just kind of slot into place. It's very, very satisfying. And what makes it even better is the lovely bold color of the red prop, which uh, Scheme C has. What would have been a nice thing to see is, uh, I know the Trumpeteer Wyvern kit has it. It has uh, this gearing mechanism, so if you spun one of the props, the other one would go the other way. I thought that was really, really cool on the Wyvern, so it could have been potentially nice to see this on the Gannet. Am I complaining? No, it just could have been a nice feature to have. But anyway, with my little recommendation out of the way, all things put aside, it looks really, really cool. I love a counter-rotating prop. I don't know about you. I know it's quite controversial, but I love them. So now looking on to the ordnance that you can use for this kit, I was going to use weapon load one, but I can only use half of weapon load one. As when I redid my CG, I realized that if I had the uh, back load, I don't actually know what they are, so if anyone could tell me, but I could only have the front torpedoes in because if I put the back load in, it unfortunately would be a tail sitter. So a little bit unfortunate, but could be worse. I could have nothing in there at all and then just make it look very, very plain. So at least I could have some of the torpedoes in there. With both of them in there, I can now seal them in by putting the Bombay doors on. They have two nice sort of locators which fix onto the actuators. It's quite hard to explain, but I hope you get the gist and it works very, very well. One thing I would say is probably don't put them on now. I'm not too sure why I 
seem to put them on now uh, just because it's just going to make my life a hell of a lot um, harder when I try to weather it so just just wait until the very end to put them on because we know that they fit very well another thing that fits very well are the exhausts uh, they just kind of slide and slot into place I didn't put any glue on these either these are all friction fitted and so far they haven't fallen out but if they do they'll slot back into place with no issues at all Veganic can now receive a nice thick coat of a GX100 which is a gloss varnish It's going to seal all of my paintwork in and also give me a nice base for all the decals. All of the decals are up to your usual airfix standard so they are absolutely brilliant to use, nice thickness, nice details, nice vibrant colours. The one thing that I would say which uh, could potentially off put you is the fact that they are quite see through. I think this would happen with any decal however you could really see a little bit of a step between the invasion stripes here but I think that's probably more down to me than anything else. I can now seal all of the decals in again with a coat of GX100 before going on to doing some weathering. The first weathering process that I'm going to do is just going to be giving the Ganna an overall wash of this dark deep brown. It is applied in the very simple way that it is applied on, left to dry and then wiped off using a uh, piece of cloth which is dampened in some white spirit. To be completely honest with you, I think I might have used the wrong colour of wash here or I didn't stir it enough as you can't really see much of the wash but I assure you it is there in some places. After it had been left to dry I'm going to now seal the entire plane using a uh, super flat colour, it pretty much is just a matte varnish and that is the uh, surface which I prefer to do all of my oil work on. So the only oil work which I'm going to do is really going to be some concentrated grime. So to do this I'm going to be using this sort of really dark uh, brown colour and then just stippling it on with my brush in the areas which I thought would probably have the most amount of grime build up around them. This is around where the exhaust is and also where the crew access holds would be. So I'm now going to use a stiffer brush and this stiff brush has actually been dampened in white spirit and then I'm just going to stipple over the areas where that oil um, is and this kind of just diffuses the oil paints and blends it in and gives a nice gradient. Any excess is cleaned up using a flat headed brush which is also doused in some white spirit. This just cleans it up and gets a bit more of a sharper effect. To deepen and enhance the effect I'm going to come in using a pretty much black oil paint. Not as much oil paint is used here and then just repeat the exact same effect. This just enhances and deepens the colour around some of the edges uh, and it just makes it a little bit more punchy. The only other use of oils I'm going to have for this build is going to be on the walkways. To make them look like they've been a little bit more used I'm going to be using this buff dust colour, uh, stippling it on and then doing the exact same process. In a situation like this you can't really wipe away all of that excess white spirit as it's going to kind of destroy the effect that I want to get you know you want that kind of ripped up sort of walked on effect. So to get rid of any of that excess white spirit instead of wiping it away I'm actually going to use a heat gun and it's a really satisfying to see how all of that white spirit just evaporates and blows away super quickly and underneath is left the exact effect which I wanted. After sealing all of my oil work in with another flat varnish, I can now use some shaders, specifically the navy grey colour. I'm going to use shaders all over the panel lines. I was making sure not to do all the rivet lines, otherwise I would have been there all day and I think it would have just turned into this weird sort of black blob. So I made sure to only specifically go over the panel lines and this just gives nice regions of depth throughout. Although it was short and sweet, that is pretty much my weathering process for the gannet. I can now go on to do the final processes. This includes fixing one or two parts which I left until the very end. This includes the hook. The hook has got quite an interesting way of going together. You kind of have to twist uh, it when it goes into place. Uh, hard to explain but if you do have the gannet it explains it in the instructions very nicely. I can now take off all of the masks um, and luckily it did actually quite a good job of keeping out all the varnish. Not, not all of it. Uh, I did have to get rid of one or two little bits but you know far better than my sea king. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. On to another very satisfying part of the build and that is demasking the canopy as I, I, I always love doing this. It is, it's always like the cherry on top for me a build and especially if it goes well and I have nice clean lines throughout, I'm very, very happy. After all three canopies have been demasked, I can now attach them onto the main fuselage. For this build, I wanted to have them in the open position to show off all of that lovely interior detail. And as you can see, you can actually see quite a lot of it. The canopies are attached using Ammo Mix Ultra Glue. This is pretty much a PVA glue, but on steroids. It's almost got the uh, 
the sort of super glue strength but doesn't fog. So the last things which I really wanted to do in regards to painting is going to be the exhaust stains. I'm going to be using that dark earth and also that dark grey colour to mix up a sort of mucky grey colour and then it is sprayed on at really low PSI and really taking my time here just to build up the layers. It's good to know that that mixture is uh, all that paint is really really diluted. So with the rigging secured, that is this build finished. I, I can't express how much I enjoyed putting this together and I really do recommend picking one up if you can. Maybe specifically from Jadland Toys and Models. I'll make sure to leave a link to them down below. But anyway, thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye bye.